What's the deal with the Air Force's secret space station of the 1960s? The manned orbiting laboratory is what we're looking at today on Vintage Space. The Manned Orbiting Laboratory, or MOL, program, for those of you who don't know about it, was a U.S. Air Force program to use a Gemini spacecraft as the basis for an orbital space station, and its story cannot be told without my favorite, the Dinosaur. Dinosaur was a hypersonic glider designed to launch atop a Titan III booster. It would go into orbit around the Earth and then return, using its aerodynamics to glide to a smooth, unpowered runway landing. It was conceived of in the mid-1950s, but didn't really get formal approval until 1957, after Sputnik's launch. When getting a man in space became a national imperative, the Department of Defense did give the program the okay to start getting off the ground. The problem was no one had a very clear idea of what dinosaurs should be. It was a joint U.S. Air Force NACA program, which then was transferred to NASA when it was incepted in 1958, but this meant that it kind of had two roles to fill. For the Air Force, it was meant to be a manned bomber, but for the NACA and NASA, it was designed as a research vehicle. The Air Force maintained that dinosaur was imperative to developing a military space capability as did Robert McNamara, the Secretary of Defense. However, it just wasn't able to keep pace with NASA's developments. And in 1962, NASA was really giving the Air Force a good run for its money when it came to space. By the end of 1962, NASA had launched five manned Mercury missions, totaling about 20 hours in space. The Air Force, on the other hand, had no manned hours in space, but it did have this great potential program. The problem for Dinosaur was that, unlike the Mercury spacecraft, Gemini had a lot more orbital capabilities. It was also conceived of as a system that would land on a runway using a paraglider. So Dinosaur's main advantage of being able to be controlled to a runway landing didn't really do anything over Gemini. So Robert McNamara started thinking about the value of a militarized version of Gemini and ordered a comparison between NASA's Gemini and Dinosaur in terms of capabilities. The report came back in favor of Gemini. Dinosaur just didn't have any significant advantages and using a NASA spacecraft, the Department of Defense would be able to use NASA's research to really make sure it was getting the most out of the technology. On December 10th of 1963, Robert McNamara cancelled Dinosaur and announced the creation of a new program, the Manned Orbiting Laboratory. NASA signed on to help with the program, sharing resources to keep costs down and also avoid duplication. As design specifications were settled, MOL emerged. A crew would launch in a Gemini spacecraft, similar to NASA's but slightly different, such that it was actually called Gemini B. Made into the back of that Gemini was a laboratory module that would house all the experiments and also give the crew ample living space and working space to get all of their work done. It was designed to stay in orbit for up to a month. Once the mission was done, the crew would get back into the Gemini, separate from the orbiting module, and return to Earth just like astronauts would on NASA missions. From there, the orbiting laboratory could either host a second crew or be deorbited remotely and just meet its fiery demise as it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. Unfortunately, NASA began to challenge MOL in 1964. Although there was an agreement that the Air Force and NASA would not duplicate technology, Technologies, NASA was realizing that after the Apollo program had landed on the moon and it was over, it wouldn't really have anything to do, so began kind of looking ahead at what might be next. The Apollo Expansion System, or Apollo X, was the first iteration of post-Apollo programming, and it was looking at using Gemini and Apollo hardware to create an orbiting space station. All of a sudden, MOL didn't look so great. NASA had better technology with its Apollo hardware than the Air Force would have with its Gemini B MOL hardware. So why would we build two space stations? There was also the ongoing argument that space should be a peaceful endeavor and not something militarized. Things changed a little bit in 1965 when the first two manned Gemini missions, Gemini 4 and Gemini 5, returned some really beautiful Earth orbital photography. Because not only were the images beautiful, but they showed roads and launch pads. It was very clear that the same or better imaging technology technology on MOL could be an invaluable resource for the United States in understanding enemy nations technology and what weapon system they were developing. So MOL did have a very firm purpose. The program was officially backed by President Johnson and found a lot of support in Congress. Some members were even saying that MOL should have the same support as Apollo, with seemingly endless funding. However, it just didn't work out. The price tag on the MOL program continued to grow, and the U.S. was now involved in the Vietnam War, which is taking up most of the Department of defense funding. Another blow to MOL was that unmanned satellites were returning images from orbit that were just as good as the Gemini images, showing roads and launch pads and missiles developing in other countries. There was no need to risk men's lives if a satellite could do the work for them. Although the Air Force maintained that MOL was a vital technology for it to have, the CIA just felt otherwise. It really felt that unmanned satellites were just as good and that MOL was just taking up resources that would be better spent elsewhere. The program was cancelled in June of 1969. 
There is so much to say about MOL. It is a totally fascinating program and I will be digging into it more, although it might take me a while to get through all the material. I had this printed the other day and this is only three documents of the hundreds that have been recently declassified. So rest assured you guys, there will be more about MOL in the future, but maybe not for a while. But also maybe some details will be coming soon. So while I continue looking through recently released material, let me know what other questions you guys have about MOL that you want me to look into specifically or other Gemini adjacent questions. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as AST Vintage Space for daily Vintage Space content. And with new episodes going up twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.